So our next presenter is uh, Ms. Zinyi Chung from uh, UNEP, and she's going to talk to us about the guidelines for green meetings. I think one of the goals we had uh, when we wrapped up the last web for Deb and I, Roby, was if we could try to do a, a green conference, and, uh, and he's going to tell us how we're doing and explain how we can do better. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, as introduced by Stephen, uh, my name is In Hee Chang, and I'm uh, from the United Nations Environment Program, uh, Division of Technology, Industry, and Economics, and we are based in Paris, France. What I thought, um, I've been asked to um, sort of t talk you through the Green Meeting Guide that we've just published. Um, actually, it's, it's in, the, in the works, but it will be published very soon. But before I go on to the actual guide, I thought maybe it will, might be interesting to give you an overall context of where, why we've produced such guide. And I don't know if Gabrielle, do you, do you recognize this picture? I was quite <laughs> intrigued to see that UNDP's teamwork uh, front page had the same picture. Anyway, outline. <laughs> we must have got it from the same source, or maybe I've nicked it from UNDP. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief uh, overview of UNEP and the UN Climate Neutral Strategy, which all this green meeting fits into. And then just one slide on our carbon footprint. And then meetings, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And green meeting, what is it? Why do we do it? How do we do it? And then, and then Q&A. So first of all, the first one, climate change. I know that you guys are all quite familiar with this. Um, especially after Al Gore's inconvenient truths and you know, Obama's uh, sort of low carbon economy and what have you, it's become a, a daily sort of buzzword. But basically, it's, it's happening. It's not a myth. Uh, it's not a question of if, but how much. And the question here is that climate change is the, a global threat, but what is the UN system doing about it? So it's more than setting a good example. Um, my team, which is the Sustainable United Nations uh, unit within the Division of Technology, Industry and Economics of UNEP, uh, we have been operating under the global sort of commitment by the Secretary General Ban. And he's actually pledged during the World Environment Day in June 2007 to actually go climate neutral or work towards climate neutrality. Um, and this is like the UN system, the UN family. Because why? Because it, man you know, Climate change impacts almost all mandates of the UN, and more UN organizations are challenged by their governing bodies and the general public to do something about it rather than preaching all the time. And then, of course, our ability to influence the public depends on our credibility and accountability. And there are a few sort of ad hoc activities going on at the moment. Um, what I think Capital Master Plan uh, the, the New York headquarters is undergoing a major renovation and they're putting in, in place some sustainability features. I think you had a, a pres uh, Natalie from ISEEC who also presented some, some ad hoc um, sort of greening initiatives by staff. And there is a chief executive board decision which I'll, I'll mention in a minute. And then there, is, there have been some carbon neutral events or green events that's been, uh, that was uh, sort of organized in the past by like Secretary General's high-level event or UNEC Belgrade Ministry event or international labor organization conferences and so forth. And I believe the Web for Development, this conference has some sustainability features, which I'll get to in a minute. So basically, um, what is a UN climate neutral strategy? Out of curiosity, has anybody heard about this? Are you aware of the fact that we have a climate neutral strategy within the UN system? By show of hands, I just want to get an idea of, okay. Not that many. <laughs> um, basically, um, the chief executive board has adopted a, uh, a strategy in October 2007 following the Secretary General Ban's commitment in June 2007. And there were three steps. First of all, we have to measure before we manage. So basically, we need to first of all measure our greenhouse gas emissions and then, as far as possible, reduce it and then, of course, you can't reduce to zero emissions. So the, the part that you can't reduce, you have to offset, and that's um, purchasing offset, you know, offset emissions from various now brokers um, out there. And you may have realized once you, uh, before you come coming here and before registering for a Web for Development conference that there was a uh, a question whether you would like to offset your travel uh, for, you know, to come to New York. And I don't know whether you've kept, you know, caught that specific uh, element, but that's part of the offsetting process. 
So three steps. First of all, measure your emissions. Second, reduce as far as possible. Third, offset. And that will give you zero emissions. So this is what we are trying to do at the UN system level, and it's a huge, huge challenge. And what we've been um, confronting uh, so far is, is exchanging knowledge and experience, actually. And this is where it also fits into this, this current conference. How do we exchange what we've already done so far? How do we exchange and um, uh, you know, exchange views and information on what we will be doing and so forth? So we, we are also in the process of developing a knowledge management system. Um, and the Environment Management Group is currently doing that. So it was very interesting to hear Gabrielle's presentation as well. And I wasn't aware of UNDP's knowledge management system. So just to give you a sort of a visual, um, visual uh, rep representation of the climate neutral strategy approach, as I said, first of all, you uh, estimate and report on the, the, the emissions that you're emitting, and then you take measures to reduce, and then you purchase carbon offsets to neutralize but the key element really is communicate what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do as a UN is to be more credible, more accountable to the general public. And for us to communicate what we're doing internally is key to, to our success. And that's where also web in, uh, information communication technology comes in. This is just to give you an, a brief uh, overview of how much we're emitting as a UN system. And a big chunk of that actually is from travel. It's from travel. Um, UNEP, for example, about more than 90% of our emissions are from travel. Um, ITU, which is the International Technolo Telecommunication Union based in Geneva, less so, but still a big chunk, over 70%. Um, so what we are doing in our Sustainable United Nations or Sun team is that we're trying to address the travel issue. But this is a little bit different from my real presentations, but I, I just wanted to mention how. Well, we want to go from missions to emissions, and actually this is where also ICT kicks in. Well, we're not using that much of the telefax or uh, landlines or telephones that much anymore. Already there is the phone teleconferencing, email direct scanning, video conferencing in particular, personalized video links, online classrooms, and so forth. And what we think would really pick up, or what we are trying to promote is virtual presence. Um, you know, it's like having a meeting without actually going there. Or this is some crazy idea that my supervisor had come up with, avatars. So it's like second life. You, know, you go to a, a pseudo um, cyberspace and you have meetings there. And you know, I'll be a dragon, you'll be a, you know, this is a joke. But still, it could be, it could be an option of uh, some creative meeting in the future. So at the United Nations Environment Program, we are really now trying to push at the UN system level, moving away from missions and travel to go to a meeting and really zooming in on the e-missions, electronic missions, and, and ICT again will play a major role in this, uh, in this drive for change. However, nothing um, substitutes face-to-face -face meetings, so it won't be absolutely eliminated. And this is where my real presentation kicks in. What are the impacts of um, organizing a meeting? Well, there are some positive impacts. You network, you, know, you learn, exchange experience firsthand. Uh, and then you're open to different ideas and cultures and, and what have you. And it's good for tourism, you know, if you have some spare time, check out the city, check out the local community and, and so forth. Um, of course, meetings, there are some uh, professional meeting organizers and, and, and that creates jobs. And then if for very high profile meetings like the Davos World Economic Forum, for example, a lot of media attention. But there are some negative impacts. It's what we really want to try and address um, as a sort of environment arm of the United Nations. As, as I said, there's a transport-related greenhouse gas emissions, which constitute a major part of the UN carbon footprint. And then, you know, while you're here on site, you, you consume water. There's a lot of bottled water now you're consuming you know, during lunchtime or tea time. Uh, a lot of waste is generated, actually. A lot of paper, you know, if, if you have an agenda or a sort of a conference package, you have all these paper and wastage uh, that's been produced. And it, it does not necessarily have any sort of local benefits to, to the, the community that you're uh, having the meeting in. Um, and this is sort of the social side of sustainability, if you will. And obviously, the paper is, is sort of a major issue in, in meetings. Um, and, then, and then the media comes in, if, especially if it's a UNEP meeting, you know, they will bash us for not being sustainable. Where, where, so we, we, you know, we need to be walking the kind of talk that we do. So these are some of the impacts that meetings have. 